I'm John Heilman, and this is the Hell and High Water Podcast. This week's guest, Billion showrunner Ryan Koppelman, with special guest David Costable. I know your story as much as you know mine, how you came from nothing. Yeah, it's true. Your dad was an insurance salesman. You ate dinner with him every night. My dad was gonzo. I ate dinner wherever I could. And yet you were still in the wealthiest state and the wealthiest country in the world with access to the best health care, schools, infrastructure. And you were born white and male at a time that was a huge advantage in the greatest capital market in the history of mankind. The roads were paved for you, Bobby, which is why you were able to move so quickly across them. Wow. I knew you were racked with guilt, but this takes it to a whole different level. Sure, the roads were paved, but I didn't even have a goddamn car. Now, you see, this is where we are different. I don't pretend I'm an ordinary guy got lucky. I am a monster, a carnivorous fucking monster. And that is uh, uh, two, a scene featuring uh, really the two, well, used to be Billions had two central characters, Bobby Axelrod and Chuck Rhodes. Uh, and now there's a third central character. In season five, uh, we meet Michael Thomas Aquinas Prince, um, the other DECA billionaire. Brian Koppelman, the one of the creators of Billions, along with his partner Dave Levine, is here. Brian, thank you for coming on the podcast today to talk about season five of Billions. There's so much to say about season five that I want to spend a bunch of time just talking about this season. And I, the way, the reason I played Axon and, and 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 Mike Prince at the beginning is that he's like the new character. He's the new ingredient here, right? I mean, for basically for four seasons, there have been other characters that have no kind of come and go, and Taylor Mason is a big important character. But this is now another guy who is on the scale of. Chuck Rhodes and Bobby Axelrod. Well, in terms I would of, argue that Wendy Rhodes has always been on that scale. Yes, in fact, I, the I'm first sorry, season I, yeah. of the show, I would just say, look, we've always thought of it as an ensemble piece. And of yes. course, marketing, there's no doubt that the marketing in the first season is going to market Chuck versus Axe, yep. Giamatti versus Damien Lewis. Uh, but I will tell you that Levine and I, from the beginning, uh, had this idea that Wendy Rhodes was going to win the first season. And that by the yes. end of the, we, will, we felt we will have succeeded if we would have succeeded if by the end of the first season, people realized they were rooting for Wendy. They thought they were supposed to pick one of those two guys season one. But by the end of season one, what they were rooting for was Wendy Rhodes. And so, and then Taylor Mason comes on, right? And Dave Costable who, on the whole time, we're going to, you and I are going to talk to together. Um, but there's no, Absolutely right that Michael Prince, played by the great Corey Stoll, mm -hmm. uh, becomes a, a key character in the present and future of, of Billions. And no doubt about that. Why Billions? Why this world? So we had tr first tried to do a story set in the hedge fund world in 2007. And we wrote something for another network. Mm -hmm. And then the crash happened and it couldn't happen. But we had studied and done, put in time at hedge funds real time, real time interviewing people. And both of us had experience with, they were men mostly, with these men who were really nation states. Yeah. And we'd started to think about what it, would, what it means to be a human who lives like a nation state. Yeah. And when you ask what's compelling about it, it's like nobody, yes, there have been movies about rich people, but really examining that, and then we were looking at people like Spitzer, Christie, uh, 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 Cuomo, and um, Giuliani, and we were yeah. looking at the ways in which they serve the public good, but really they serve their own good. And so we realized you set a nation state against someone with the kind of discretion, because something people don't realize still is the amount of discretion United States attorneys have. Yep. And we were like, United States attorneys, they get to decide who the fuck they want to prosecute and for what. And we would meet with, like we went and met with a, a guy who was very high up at SEC enforcement, and, and, he, and he talked about his amount of discretion. And he talked about U.S. attorney's amount of discretion. We realized, well, that discretion is great if someone's serving the public interest. It's not great if what they're ultimately serving is their own interest. And we realized if you set that nation state against a king, because that's essentially what U.S. attorneys are in terms of their powers, you would have the chance to do something that would warrant telling a story for a really long yeah. time. Plus, we noticed, I mean, you're asking, plus we noticed how 
Trump and Mark Cuban. And I like Mark Cuban. has been a friend of mine for a long time. But if there was a moment where Mark and Donald Trump were the two biggest stars on reality television before Trump ever declared for that he was going to run. And it was like, why did America seem to uh, want this particular kind of aspirational being to be their avatar for success? And so all that stuff, John, and when we started coming up with the construct, and when that happened, you know, we had started uh, working on this idea, and then an agent, a guy named Joe Cohn, said, like, Andrew Ross Sorkin's working on something similar. You guys should get together. So we got together with Andrew and and together began conceiving of how this pilot, the first episode could happen. We wrote it without selling it. We we told Andrew, uh, we're not going to pitch this. We're going to only interested in doing this if we write it on spec because we want to be able to control its destiny if we nail it. And we just gave everything we had to it. You know, David and I gave everything we had to making sure that we wrote an undeniable first episode and that would give us some ability to find a suitor who we felt would make the show, not just buy the show. Just tell me where, you know, what is the what is Thomas Aquinas, Michael Thomas Aquinas Prince, what does he do for you? What's his he allows you to explore a bunch of questions and a bunch of character traits that we've not seen in the show before, really. I don't think there's been a character who's like that. Yeah, Axe is not concerned. Axe as a character is not concerned with questions of conventional morality. Right. And Michael Prince is. Yes, very much so. And so the show, I think the show is asking this question about whether there's such thing as a good billionaire. Yes. And it feels like a question that a lot of us are the culture is wrestling with. 100%. 100%. You know, we're already deep into shooting season six. And um, that question continues to be prosecuted over the course of season six. Is that what six is about? It's raised in five, right? Because there's a moment where Chuck says to to, to Prince, he says, So because I'm so rich, I'm inherently guilty. It's what I built a good chunk of my career on. So we've all seen people who hold themselves out as moral beings and actually know they're not moral beings. Yes. But what happens when someone holds themselves out as a moral being, believes that to be the case? uh, And has to grapple with, and the show and the world has to grapple with the structural aspects that by their very existence question that notion force the, the questioning of that notion. And and it, and to us, it gave, talk about n- new life. I mean, it just breathes life into, um, into the story that we're incredibly animated to be telling. And um, yeah. I can't wait for people, I mean, I can't wait for people to see season six. Thank you for watching. You can watch the full episode of Hell and Hot Water on The Recount, streaming daily or listen to it wherever you get your podcasts.